Hey guys, welcome to the Agonorsa Relief YouTube channel. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and you might recognize me from my YouTube channel, Mad Scientist Barbecue, where I'm cooking barbecue with a fire all the time. I have two big passions. One is, of course, barbecue, which I absolutely love, and the other is cigars. And for that second reason, I'm here in Miami today because I wanna see why cigars still have to be made by hand. We have tons of technology. We have smartphones in our pockets. We always hear about our smartphones are more powerful than the computers that went to the moon with the Apollo rockets. But still, we make cigars by hand. I wanna know why it's important that they're made by hand and I wanna see how it's done. So Elizabeth is gonna show us that, but first we're gonna meet Terrence Riley, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Aganor Salif, and he's gonna show us around. Come with me. Hey, Terrence, how are you, man? Hey, welcome to Aganorsa. Thank you, thank you. I finally made it. Super excited. See lots of cigars. I think I see maybe a cigar room over there, maybe another one there. So I want to see everything. I want to know why cigars are still rolled by hand, even with all the technology you have, and exactly how it's done. So what can we see first? Well, we're going to check out both our warehouse, where we store all the cigars that come from Nicaragua to the United States, and we're going to check out our boutique factory, that where we make cigars in Miami, the old Cuban way. Gotcha. So, do all of your cigars come through here? Every cigar that's shipped uh, from Nicaragua and uh, goes to the United States goes through this building right here. Gotcha. So, the Aganor Salif cigars I have in my humidor once lived here? Yes, sir. Okay. Good to know. I want to go see their former home. Oh, let's, let's get going. Yeah. It's like the biggest box of cigars I've ever seen. 24 880s. 8 by 80? Yeah. Wow. A single cigar? Wow. I don't think I've seen this. The torch? Yeah, the torch. It's a, it's a brush foot cigar. So it has uh, the wrapper is removed after the first inch, a half inch. And so you're tasting binder and fillers initially. And then it hits the wrapper. You see how the progression of the cigar gotcha. develops with the proper shit. Well, GFRs have a special place in my heart as it was the first ever real cigar that I ever smoked, unless you count like a whack a mile. I don't. And okay, I wouldn't either. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I I don't know that I've smoked more JFRs than anything else, but um, it's up there, it's close. But, You're a great man, we appreciate it. You have excellent <laughs> taste. All right, can we check out the humidor? Yeah, so come on in here. So all our cigars that ship uh, throughout the country come in through here. Nice. Fish and pulp. So basically, it's a, it's a warehouse facility, different brands, JFR, like we just talked about, Lunatic, uh, uh, Aganor Salive, Guardian of the Farm. It's all kept here for months on end to kind of settle. When they ship from Nicaragua, you know, it's on a boat or a plane, usually a boat gets here, needs to rest. So sure. we bring them in here, we let them rest for a few months, and then start shipping them out. Gotcha. So by the time this shows up, at your local tobacconist, it's ready to smoke. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's, we, we don't ship them and then you have to, you know, age, age them for two years before you can have them. You know, they're ready to smoke. Now, again, a little aging never hurt to leave it for, an, you know, a couple of weeks or a month or a year even. Sure. But when you receive the cigars, they should be ready to smoke right then and there and be enjoyed. You know, Terrence, this uh, humidor is a little bigger than mine. <laughs> you know, I thought I had the be all end all of humidors. I guess that wasn't quite right. Well, you know, we don't like to brag. <laughs> Do you have any idea how many cigars you actually have in, in, in a room like this? Ah, uh, there's a several hundred thousand at least and over a you know, million dollars of inventories. Wow. And also we keep the tobacco that uh, you're going to see rolled shortly in here. So this is some filler tobacco. This is okay. our Corojo 99 from Jalapa. Take a, take a sure. breath of that. That smells really good. It smells kind of a sweetness. Yeah, yeah, get almost like a raisin. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's exactly like that. One thing I noticed um, when I met you in Nicaragua was that um, in piles of fermenting tobacco, you get like an ammonia smell. Yeah, we want to get rid of that. Right. Yeah, yeah. You get all of that out, and then it smells kind of raisiny sweet. Yeah, so you, you you have the fermentation and curing process, which those kind of purge all, all those things you were just talking about, those unpleasant uh, aromas. Mm -hmm. And then in aging, it kind of just sweetens it out. It's kind of like going from carving something to sanding it. Aging is like sanding. Ah. And so you get you get more of the nuance and the finesse and those, you know, the raisin and those type of aromas come out during the aging process. Oh, okay. So the fermentation is like the, you get the general flavor from the fermentation and aging is like fine detail. Exactly. Kind of yeah, yeah. You get the nuances. Okay. That's super cool. I wish I could just take a bale of tobacco home, but um, <laughs> I don't think they would allow me to put that in the carry-on space. Yeah, there, there might, might be some questions. Yeah. So I noticed that there are a bunch of different kinds of cigars here. Do you, can you 
walk me through like some of the brands that you guys make? Yeah, sure. I mean, we got all sorts of stuff here. Right over on this side, we've got our Aganor Salif uh, Anniversario. This is one of our ultra premium lines. All tobaccos in there aged between three to five years. Just great cigars uh, available uh, all year round, but in limited quantities. So this is a great brand of ours. Can I interrupt here? Sure. This is a phenomenal cigar. If you are in a place where you're like, ah, those really light wrappers, I don't think they have much flavor. I don't think I want to smoke that cigar. This breaks that myth because this is a Connecticut wrapped cigar, but actually has flavor and tremendous flavor at that. I was legitimately shocked at how good this was because I thought, I'll try it. I don't think I'm going to like it, but it was phenomenal. Well, thank you. And we have some, you know, even some brands that this is actually something you don't see in the market very much anymore. Bueno Cosecha was a favorite of mine. It was one of the cigars that uh, uh, actually got me to join the company. Just a, a credible cigar, but uh, not, not uh, very commonly known. So oh. uh, Bueno Cosecha means a good crop in Spanish. Oh, okay. And uh, and it's a it's an old brand of ours we've had for a long time. Great cigars. In fact, uh, I, I think I've seen it. I have one. But don't mind if I do. Is this, is this the cigar that you were making when it was uh, Costa Yes, yeah, yeah. That, that brand, in fact, wow. that brand I think even outdates uh, Casa Fernandez. Wow. So it's been around for a long time, and we still have, as you can see, a little bit left. We have some accounts that carry it, but it's not something we've uh, promoted as much in the past few years. But a hidden gem. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you. All right. Let's see what else is in here. Yeah, yeah. We got. Right. I just want to take all of this with me. You're looking to your to your right is the Garden of the Farm. Garden of the Farm is a collaboration project with Warp Cigars. Okay. Uh, it uh, it was a top uh, ten cigar of the year by Cigar Aficionado. Oh, and uh, named after the American Bulldogs, we use the guard our field. So on the on the boxes, you can see the <laughs> you see the dog. You know, I like that. That's super cool. I've had dreams that look like this. Yeah, <laughs> our validation lines. Yeah, I can notice the validation. Guard of the farm Cerberus, which is another variant of the Guardian of the farm line. You know, you got the the three headed dog, and this is this actually has the Corojo 2012. Yes, right? sir. Yeah. So this is the only. Uh, blend of ours because we make it for some other people using some blends where uh the corojo 2012 seed varietal is used we mostly use corojo 99 career 98 this one also has 2012 that's why there's three heads each one's named for one of the seed varietals oh uh, super cool super cool it's basically meant to be a storage room where stuff comes in you keep the right temperature you keep the right humidity you let them kind of settle after they've been traveling uh sure. from uh from other countries so let me ask a professional here. Sure. What temperature and humidity do you have to set on for this roof? So we keep it actually, our room says 70, 70. Right. But remember, we're in Miami, Florida in August. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's hot yeah. and it's humid. Yeah. And so we actually drop it down, you know, more close to, to 65, 64. The reason for that is, is every time they open the door, humidity and heat rush out. Gotcha. So you keep it at 70, 70, you're going up probably 71, 72. And it's a dangerous area because now you're entering where it starts to get a little you know, too moist. You could have problems with bugs that way. Sure. Uh, so there's a lot of danger with that. Now, if we were in Arizona, we would say probably keep it 71, 72, because every time you open the door, it's sucking out the, the humidity. Gotcha. Uh, so, so it really depends where you are. But for a place in Miami, Florida, uh, you got you got to keep it a little bit lower. So an order from a retailer comes in. What does the process look like for them to get? Because I'm assuming they get a cardboard box and they open it up and they're like, oh, yeah, here's the validation that we wanted. Here's the anniversary that we wanted. How does that all work? Yeah, so they send the order in to, through us, uh, either our office or our reps send it to our office, and then they take that. They create a picking ticket. Mm -hmm. They send it out to our warehouse. The warehouse takes a look at the picking ticket. They gather all the all the items on the ticket. Somebody else packs it up. Somebody else weighs it for UPS. They charge it up, and off it goes. So if all the product is in inventory, which we're pretty good about having product in inventory, within the within the day it'll ship. Um, sometimes if you have an item on back order or something that it's limited, only comes out once a year, that might take longer. But generally speaking, we have about a 24-hour turnover. Fermented tobacco leaves. This is what makes the magic possible. One of the cool things about cigars is that no matter where the tobacco is grown, no matter what tobacco variety it is, no matter what the shape of the cigar is, or what particular tobaccos are in any given cigar, what it offers to the consumer is something that's universal. Flavor, relaxation, enjoyment, all of those things in a familiar shape but in order to get from this to this, you need a roller. So let's go check out how this kind of tobacco becomes what we recognize as an ultra premium cigar. Wow, right, I'm excited. Thank you. So in this room here, we have the capacity to roll cigars. We have a level nine Cuban roller, Elizabeth Rodile. She makes cigars entirely by hand, the Cuban style. We can band, we can box, and we do a lot of different projects for uh, events or for, uh, small runs of cigars for certain clients. 
And here at Aganor Salif, they make tremendous cigars. So Terrence, what separates Aganor Salif, like what you do versus any other cigar you might find? What do you guys focus on? I know you grow tons of tobacco, but what makes Aganor so unique? Well, our leaf is our strength. That's our slogan. And it's because we have a unique flavor and aroma. It's unlike anything else out there. And that comes from the seed bridles we grow, the land we grow it on, and the fact we control the process from seed to ash, the curing, fermentation, aging, blending, everything until you light that cigar up is controlled by us. And that gives us a signature flavor and aroma that you can taste the difference. Uh, that's super cool. From seed to ash. I don't, I don't know that I've heard that before, but this tobacco and this cigar... Agonors has had control over since it was a seed. Exactly. Wow. That's super impressive. And if you guys don't know, Terrence knows a tremendous amount about how tobacco is grown, how it's processed, how it's, you know, shipped, how it's rolled, how it's sold. Everything you could ever want to know, Terrence, at least uh, in my opinion, knows it. So things like, oh, well, actually Sumatra tobacco isn't grown in Sumatra. All kinds of things like that. So this is going to be a treat for me to be a learner here. The thing I've been wondering is... With all the technology that exists today, why are we still rolling cigars by hand? Because I'm, I'm convinced somebody could make a machine that would do it. Well, yeah, absolutely. In fact, you can use machines to make cigars and there's machine-made cigars. The premium cigar industry is an art. It's not a traditional widget business where you turn on a switch and more things come out. You really need to have a certain level of craftsmanship, of skill. And the only really way to capture that is still through the old process of doing everything by hand. That makes sense. You know, with the the, the sight, the feel, the, you know, the, the smells, everything that goes into it, that roller can evaluate exactly what's going on better than a machine can, you know, like by taking a picture or something. Else. Yeah, there's no machine that uh, yet is able yeah. to, to capture the essence of, of a true craft and a roller. Yeah, it's super awesome. Could we have Elizabeth show us how it's done? Absolutely. All right, well, let's go grab her. And, let's, uh, let's go grab her and let's do it. Something I've always wanted to see in person. I've caught glimpses of it in places. But this is going to be the first time I see it kind of from start to finish. Super cool. You're going to love it. Mi nombre es Elizabeth Rodil. Nací en Cuba, eh, pequeño pueblo llamado Quibicán. Eh, trabajo haciendo tabaco desde que tenía 18 años en la fábrica de mi pueblo, haciendo tabaco de diferentes marcas, diferentes vitolas, desde la Gran Corona hasta la Mareva, eh, la vitola y las marcas desde Coiba. Montecristo, todas las marcas que, ah, que se hacían. Llegué a, a este país eh, hace 15 años y desde que llegué estoy trabajando para ganar salir. Estoy torcedora de tabaco de hoja a mano. Empiezo con las hojas. Lo primero que se hace son las hojas. Se cogen las hojas para hacer el, lo que se llama el bonche, la tripa. Se, le, se hace la tripa, depende la cantidad de hojas que lleva. Solamente empiezo con las tres primeras, que son las tres primeras hojas, y después, según el grueso del tabaco, se sigue cogiendo la soja. O sea, hasta que llevar el grueso que yo entiendo de cada, de cada tabaco. Ya después se pone en la prensa, se le da en tiempo, 15, 20 minutos en la prensa, se saca después de la prensa, después de esos 15 minutos. I thought, I thought, oh, I actually liked it. This is crazy. And then, like, first real, and I'm going to figure out what, a real cigar. And so, it, like, me and a couple of buddies, you're like, Let's pull our money together. It goes for a very cool wheel or place called the at some our store in there. Yeah. So. Se vira el bonche, se vira la tripa, se le da otra vuelta en la prensa de 15 o 20 minutos más. Ya después se saca el, el taba, la, la tabla de la prensa, me empieza a asociar, se pasa a ponerle lo que es la capa. Voy a hacer unos tabacos lanceros. Voy a utilizar una capa. Ahora vamos a cortarle el borde. Este bordecito siempre se corta. Vamos a coger un bonche. Eh, generalmente todos los tabacos llevan 
de hasta dos vueltas y medias en el tabaco, de la, o sea, la capa lleva dos vueltas y media. Y le voy quitando el palito en la punta para que no se marque la capa. Uf. Ahora voy a hacerle la cabeza. La cabeza ya se corta. Lleva una lágrima. La lágrima se hace, su, de, depende del tamaño del tabaco, de grueso. Ahora le voy a montar el pañuelo para que vean. Y lleva lo mismo, dos vueltas y medias en el pañuelo. En la cabeza, hasta dos vueltas y media. Y el mismo proceso. Dos vueltas y media o tres, depende. En la cabeza. Y como mismo el tabaco, el tabaco lleva dos, dos vueltas y media de, de la hoja. Y es el mismo proceso. Es el, ¿ves? Como pueden ver, dos vueltas y media. Que se le vean. Y así sucesivamente es todo el proceso que lleva todos los tabacos que se producen en el, dia en el diario. Depende de 150, 200, depende de lo que se haga diario. Y es el mismo proceso para todos. Y así, y al final cortarlo a la medida que lleva el tabaco. Quedan de nueve meses, llegué a la novena categoría con, con bastante trabajo, bastante sacrificio porque... Cuesta, cuesta mucho llegar a la novena categoría. A, llegar, a tener una categoría eh, como esa tan alta, puedo hacer cualquier tipo de puro. So, estoy preparada para hacer cualquier tipo de puro. Eh, yo diría que cada año de trabajo se aprende algo nuevo como tabaquero. Se aprende mucho más eh, según la experiencia y los años. Eh, so, mucho sacrificio, mucho sacrificio, mucho, 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 muchas horas de, de esfuerzo, de trabajo, de querer aprender, de querer superarme para ser tabaquera de, de novena categoría. Sí, llevo mucho sacrificio. Es un esfuerzo y, 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 y empeño de querer aprender y aprender más y, y saber hacer todo tipo de vitola y todo tipo de tabaco porque depende de, de lo que es el largo y el grueso del tabaco, llevar siempre la medida para que todo te quede bien, que no, que no se te salga de, de lugar las medidas de los tabacos, o sea, el grueso, que es fundamental en eso. Pero sí, sí cuesta llegar a novena categoría. En Cuba mucho aprendizaje y aquí mucha experiencia. Me ha servido mucho, mucho la experiencia de traída de Cuba a este país a Ganorcia principalmente, que me abrió las puertas para, para poder seguir en lo que me gusta hacer, que es hacer tabaco. And if people want to follow Aganorsa Leaf on social media, how do they do that? So our YouTube channel, please, if you like this video, subscribe and give it a like. Uh, we have Instagram, which is Aganorsa Leaf, Facebook, Aganorsa Leaf, and it's, uh, those are the two best areas to follow us. And our website and site, uh, aganorsaleaf.com. Actually, I highly recommend the website. I've spent a significant amount of time there looking at everything. It's really cool. It gives you a lot of information that oftentimes you don't find. So if you liked the video, like, subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.